I'll call this me a regular meeting to order for October the 4th, 2022. Result of the agenda for the October 4th, 2022 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. All in favor? It's carried. I, we have Councilor Morio by video and we have Councilor Friesen not attending and I'm, I think uh, Councilor Antonio might be just late. <clears throat> Result of the minutes of the September 20th, 2022 regular council meeting be adopted or approved. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, so uh, four, four point one. We have CFO Ganita and uh, Mr. Hardy from Pasco Hardy and Company with the um, uh, 2021 draft audited consolidated financial statements. So I will uh, turn it over to either CFO Ganita or Mr. Hardy. I think CFO Ganita will. Uh We'll be going up first, going through the financial statements. Okay, go I ahead. Need, I don't need to share my screen, please. Okay, oh. yes, just... Uh... <clears throat> Should we get see if we can eat it? Everyone can see it now? Yes, thank you. So the, these are the consolidated financial statements, which means that every amount reported is a consolidation of all the town's funds, general operating, utility operating, capital and reserve funds, as well as all controlled entities and proportionate shares of government partnerships, interfund and intercompany balances and transactions are eliminated. The controlled entities are the handy van and municipal developers and the partnerships are the medical retention recruitment fund, the library, the creation commission, the airport commission, planning district and rise. So the consolidated financial statements are the responsibility of management and we're thus prepared by me in accordance with the Canadian Chartered Professional Accountants Public Sector Accounting Board standards and the auditors have given their opinion in the independent auditor's report. The consolidated statement of financial position, page six, see that uh, cash and temporary investments increase from 3.7 million to 5.8 million. That's a combination of there being a surplus as well as borrowing. The pre-retirement bonus entitlement is uh, the estimated net present value of future payouts to employees of the pre-retirement bonus when they retire. Unearned revenue consists of prepaid property taxes and utility, water meter deposits, rental prepayments and deposits, and grants to be used for expenditures in future years. <clears throat> I went down because the previous year had the $240,000 federal safe restart funding that got used in 2021. Landfill closure liabilities, uh, another estimate, estimated net present value of the future expected cost to close the landfill. Long term debt uh, consists of dementias from past years for, that are still outstanding for the municipal office, wellness center construction. Firefighter equipment, 12th and Adam and 3rd Street, Street South Paving, Ross and Hayes Street lift stations, Centennial Arena Ice Floor, Incident Command Vehicle, Loader Backhoe, 6th Avenue lift station and well-controlled building, 
as well as new dementias for wellness center repairs at Main Street water and sewer renewal. So it went up from 8 million to 8.3 million. Uh, prepaid local improvement district levies are that $727 prepayment made by taxpayers for the wellness center borrowing and it's amortized to revenue over the term of the debenture. Deferred government transfers is the federal and provincial funding repayable if the wellness center is closed before December 31, 2025, and that decreased from 3.2 million to 580,000 with passing another milestone in the funding agreement. So only 10% of the original funding is repayable at this point until December 31, 2025, if the wellness center is closed before then. Tangible capital assets is the net book value of the town's capital assets, as well as those of controlled entities and current partnerships. The consolidated statement of operations shows the budget, current year actual and previous year actual. And the previous year actual has been restated um, in the past, the contributions from other municipalities for the recreation facilities were shown as grants, part of grants other, but they got reclassified to these or these because it's a sale of service that would come reclassified to these or these. So the prior period comparative amounts were moved to these or these as well. Uh, property taxes increased 176,000 from the previous year's budget that was reduced for the COVID pandemic. Other revenue includes gain on sale of capital assets and real estate, capital assets contributed, cash donations, penalties and interest, amortization of prepaid local improvement levies and supplier rebates. Grants from the province includes uh, 325,000 municipal operating, 454,000 urban policing, $240,000 federal city restart that came through the province, 8,000 handy van operating, 54,000 library operating. That's, that's the town's uh, share of the library. Uh, 15,000 COVID bridge grant, 40,000 fire protection, safe at home 10,000, hometown green team 9,000, healthy together now 2,000, Dutch home disease 2,000, and 810,000 of the wellness center funding that's brought into revenue with passing another milestone. Grants other includes 442,000 federal gas tax, which was a one-time doubling Otherwise, it would have been 200 and some thousand and 1.8 million wellness center construction brought into revenue is passing a milestone and 138,000 from other from municipalities towards the partnerships. Under expenses, uh, general government services decreased 60,000 due to the assistant CAO resigning. Protective services increased 298,000 from accruing the RCMP retroactive pay increase. Transportation services decreased 72,000 from reducing workforce due to COVID. Environmental health services decreased 76,000 due to reduction in the landfill supervisor contract. And recreation and cultural services decreased 50,000 due to facilities being closed due to COVID. And water and sewer services decreased 75,000 due to the Director of Public Works becoming a CAO in early 2021, as well as fewer utility connections. The consolidated statement of change in net financial assets 
show us that there's a net debt at the end of the year, but it's less than the previous year from 8 million down to 3.5 million. And that's uh, mostly due to the re release of the liability to repay the wellness center construction funding. And so a net debt means that uh, revenues will need to be raised in future years to cover present liabilities. The statement of cash flows shows where the cash comes from and goes to. And so 5.1 million came from revenues and expenses adjusted from accrual to cash basis, including the 2.6 million from the wellness center construction funding brought into revenue due to passing a milestone. Capital transactions, 870,000 was used to acquire tangible capital assets. Under financing transactions, uh, 930,000. Proceeds from the debentures, less 612,000 to repay debentures and then that 2.6 million decrease in the wellness center deferred funding. So uh, the increase in cash and temporary investments was 2.1 million. Uh, the notes to the consolidated financial statements, uh, these preliminary ones that uh, just talk about the, the fact that the town is a municipality, significant accounting policies, uh, financial statements prepared in accordance with public sector accounting standards. It's an accrual basis where revenues are recorded when earned and expenses when incurred. We already mentioned the uh, entities that are consolidated, uh, percentages are listed there for the partnerships. On um, uh, tangible capital assets are amortized over their estimated useful life, so those are all listed on page 11. Page 12, there's a note about measurement uncertainty, the fact that there's uh, estimates in the financial statements, the major ones being the useful lives of tangible capital assets. The landfill closure liability is based on estimated future cash flow using an assumed rate of inflation to the expected date of closure discounted to the financial statement date using an assumed long-term average borrowing rate and the uh, accrual of the pre-retirement bonus entitlement is based on estimated future cash flows using an assumed rate of inflation to the expected dates of retirement discounted to the financial statement date using an assumed long-term average borrowing rate. That's uh, just the nature of uh, preparing financial statements in accordance with public sector accounting standards that there will be some estimates and assumptions and those need to be disclosed. The, uh, all the rest of these notes just uh, break down the <coughs> amounts that are on the statement of financial position and statement of operations. As you can see, cash and temporary investments. And uh, of that 5.8 million, the town has designated 3.5 to reserves for debt principal repayments and tangible capital asset acquisitions. And then that, that balance also includes 675,000 held by controlled entities and government partnerships. Under uh, note seven, accounts payable and accrued liabilities, the trade accounts payable dropped from 716,000 in the previous year to 511,000. The, the previous year included uh, 205,000 payables for 
wellness center repairs. So those bills got paid in 2021. The other expenses, uh, other accrued expenses went up from 57000 to 394000 with the accruing the RCMP and the QP retroactive pay increases. Note 9, under, under the revenue, the big change there is the unused grants dropped from 272000 to 42000 bringing that federal safe restart funding into revenue in 2021. It was received in 2020, but it wasn't used till 2021. Landfill closure liability, estimated closure costs over the next 65 years, 6.6 .6 million, discounted at 4.5%. And uh, multiplying by the percentage that's used a lot, utilized was the capacity used to date in the remaining number of years. Gives the liability of 105,000. So uh, we talked about the long-term debt. You can see the amounts there listed there. Big, big one being uh, wellness centers that down, paid off from 4.1 million down to 3.9 million, and that matures in 2035. So you can see that the principal payments required in each of the next five years. Are 600 and some thousand for the next four years and then 551,000 in the fifth year. Uh, note 14 accumulated surplus uh, consists of 1.8 million in the general operating fund, 157,000 in the utility operating fund, 25 million invested in tangible capital assets and other related borrowings and 3.2 million in reserve fund and as well as the 1.6 million of the consolidated entities and you'll recall that in, over the past several years the amount of Money raised from a special service levy for police protection exceeded the cost of the police protection. And that's, that's been spent now on police protection. And so there's no more access to carry forward to future years that's been effectively paid off. Under uh, note 15 commitments, there's the leasing agreement with the RCMP, Swan Valley Employment Training Project, <coughs> and uh, two water plant uh, projects. Mm -hmm. The water plant projects are expected to cost 350000 and the town is expecting half, uh, funding for half of that from the uh, Manitoba Water Services Board. So those uh, projects are in progress now. So going to the schedule of tangible capital assets page 26 uh, the additions to land and land improvements of 37,000 were sidewalks, 32,000 and outdoor rink, 5,000. Building additions were pool boiler, 93,000 and donated baseball concession and storage building uh, valued at 75,000. Vehicles, equipment and furniture additions, 
$379,000 grader, $15,000 survey equipment, $29,000 firefighting equipment, $12,000 fuel tanks, $8,000 arena hot water tank, and $14,000 plate ground structure that's being installed and in, in soon. Uh, disposals included $43,000 trucks, $101,000 garbage compactor, $280,000 grader, and $34,000 tractor. The additions to roads, streets, and bridges were was the main street curb and gutter. Uh, schedule two, consolidated schedule of revenues, and schedule three, consolidated schedule of expenses. Uh, show more detail for the revenues and expenses already discussed. Schedule four, consolidated statement of operations by program is uh, useful because it shows uh, revenues, expenses, and net cost for each program. Uh, general government includes uh, property taxes that are raised to cover everything. So it shows a $4.7 million surplus, but that money is used to cover all the other columns. The, the net cost of protective services is 1.2 million. Net cost of transportation is 636,000. Net cost of environmental health services is 263,000. And we're bringing the what the 2.6 million dollars of. Uh, Wellness center funding into revenue and recreation and cultural services shows a $1.2 million surplus, but without that, it would have been a $1.4 million deficit comparable to the previous year. Schedule 5 shows the same revenue and expenses as Schedule 4, except broken down between core government controlled entities and government partnerships. So you can see the effect of consolidating in the controlled entities and government partnerships. The grants and contributions are negative because it's eliminating the transfers between the town and those entities. Schedule six, change in reserve fund balances of transfers to equipment replacement reserve from the general operating fund where 170,000 budgeted plus 7,800 from the work crew truck rental and the equipment reserve was used for $20,000 for the loader backhoe to venture payment and 290. 9,000 for the greater purchase the transfers to the fire truck replacement reserve, 40,000 as budgeted, plus the 40,654 fire protection grant for put into the reserve. Road improvement reserve uh, transferred 184,500 for three years portion of provincial operating basket funding previously separate as the municipal road improvement program that, that co combined all into the basket funding. So uh, council made the decision to put the past three years uh, into the road improvement reserve. And the uh, recreation reserve money put into it there was 40,000 as budgeted plus 73,000 from borrowing for the whirlpool that was expended in 2020. And again, council decided to put that into the reserve for future recreation projects. And 40,000 was used for the pool boiler and access door. 
or the federal gas tax, uh, 442,000 that the town received uh, got put into the reserve. And the gas tax reserve used 32,000 for sidewalks, 120,000 for Main Street curb and gutter. And then uh, the utility put 50,000 into the lagoon reserve and the surplus uh, the utility operating fund into utility replacement reserve 155,000. Schedules eight and nine show the financial position and operations for just utility that's required by the public utilities board. They need that on a separate schedule for their purposes. Schedule 10 reconciles the financial plan that council approved early in the year to the budget according to public sector accounting standards. So you can see that the financial plan for general and utility were budgeted at zero, but uh, you need to add in to expenses the amortization because it's not part of the municipal act budget, but it is an expense for public sector accounting standards and take, take out the uh, transfers to capital, uh, take out the uh, debt charges and add in just the interest portion because the principal repayment is not an expense under PSAP. And then adding in the consolidated entities budgets. So tra transfers to from reserves and surpluses are eliminated because they're not expenses or revenues under public sector accounting standards. Schedule 11 shows the change in the taxes on the roll. That's at the beginning of the year uh, in the tax levy and various other additions to the, the collections. Now it's at the end of the year, 398,000. Schedule 12 shows how the tax levy was calculated, the assessments and the mill rates for both municipal taxes and school taxes. Schedule 13 shows the expenses for just the general operating fund, whereas the schedule of the three of expenses was of all funds and other entities consolidated. This is just the general operating fund. And the final schedule is the reconciliation of the annual surplus. So again, this, the same adjustments that were done on the PSAP, on the budget reconciliation that are done to the surplus. So municipal net surplus under the municipal act numbers are at the top and then adjustments to convert those to the public sector accounting standards gives the surplus deficit at the bottom that agrees to the consolidated statement of operations so that's all that i wanted to highlight are there any questions Any questions? Council Morio, I can't see you, so if, there, if there's anything. No, no questions here. Okay, uh, see if we'll get and carry on. I'll turn it over to Mr. Harvey to present his audit. Okay. Hey, thank you very much, Terry. Uh, once again, a very excellent presentation and uh, you summarized the financial statements very well. Um, just a reminder to everyone that uh, your CFO is uh, the preparer of these financial statements. So management uh, and those charged with governance are responsible for the financial statements. And Terry does uh, an absolutely great job uh, in the preparation of the financial statements, all the schedules, the notes, and so on. 
So we are doing a, a, a pure audit. We're auditing your financial operations, your financial controls, and the financial statements and the presentation. So in our audit report, the very important uh, two paragraphs are right at the beginning, our opinion. So we indicate in here that we have audited the consolidated financial statements of the town of Swan River, which comprise of the consolidated statement of financial position as at your year end, December 31st, 2021, and the consolidated statements of operations, change in net financial assets, and cash flows for the year that ended, and the notes to the consolidated financial statements including a summary of significant accounting policies. So these are all important uh, components of your uh, audited financial statements. And in our opinion, and this is the important uh, part of the whole audit report, in our opinion, the accompanying consolidated financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the town as at December 31st, 2021, and the results of its operations and its cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with Canadian public sector uh, accounting standards, uh, as Terry mentioned in his presentation uh, in your notes of the financial statement. So then the next few paragraphs, firstly, what's the basis for our opinion? Uh, we indicate that we did conduct our audit in accordance with, and we have some standards that we have to follow called Canadian generally accepted auditing standards. So our responsibilities under those standards are uh, further described later on, on the next page. Um, and uh, we believe that the audit evidence that we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide the basis for our opinion. And then the next section is, what are the responsibilities of management, uh, which would be Terry, uh, your CFO and finance uh, department, and those charged with governance, which would be uh, all the members of the council uh, for these consolidated financial statements. So management is responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of these consolidated financial statements in accordance with, again, those standards, Canadian public sector accounting standards, and for such internal control as management determines is necessary to enable the preparation of consolidated financial statements that are free from material misstatement, uh, whether due to fraud or error. And uh, as part of our audit, we do, uh, we do uh, checks on to make sure that those internal controls are working and functioning. And uh, if they weren't, we would draw that to the attention of uh, management and those charged with governance. And we have another letter that we'll look at right after this uh, that indicates our findings in that respect. And those charged with governance are responsible for overseeing the town's financial reporting process. So this is all part of that process is again the meeting uh, for the approval of the financial statements, the presentation of the financial statements, and the presentation of myself, the auditor, uh, to let you know uh, what we found and what the uh, results of our audit are. The next page simply summarizes what are our responsibilities as the auditor uh, for the audit of the consolidated financial statements. And so our objectives are to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the consolidated financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, and to issue an auditor's report that includes our opinion. So that's what we have done here. We uh, obtain reasonable assurance, uh, and, and reasonable assurance is a high level of assurance, but it's not a guarantee that an audit conducted in accordance with our standards that we have to follow uh, will always detect a material misstatement when it exists. So misstatements can arise from fraud or error and are considered material if they individually or in the aggregate uh, could reasonably be expected to influence uh, the economic decisions of users, which is basically yourselves or people that are going to loan you money, but uh, you know, provide funding and so on. Uh, so the decisions of users on the basis of these consolidated financial statements. Uh, and the next uh, few paragraphs just indicate the types of things that we might look at 
uh, or the types of things that we might perform. And in the very last uh, sentence, we communicate with those charged with governance regarding, among other matters, the planned scope and timing of the audit and significant audit findings, including any significant deficiencies in internal control that we identified during our audit. So that's, that's our audit report. Then we issue a, um, a letter that we call an audit findings letter. And I'm not sure, Terry, if you have a copy of that uh, to present um, on a shared screen, but I can just uh, work uh, through the letter. It's a letter that we uh, address to the uh, mayor and members of council. And we indicate that this letter has been prepared to assist you with your review of the consolidated financial statements of the town of Swan River for the year ending December 31st, 2021. And at the time I wrote the letter, we look forward to meeting with you and discussing the matters outlined below, which is what we're doing right now. And we've completed the audit of the consolidated financial statements with the exception of the following items. And these will all be cleared off uh, after these statements are approved at your council meeting tonight. So receipt of a signed representation letter by management. Um, I think Deanna and Terry um, have been working on that today. Uh, completing our discussions with council, which is what we're doing right now, and obtaining evidence of council's approval of the consolidated financial statements. So Terry will provide us with a copy of your resolution approving the financial statements. And at that point, then I can sign off on the audit report. So significant risks that we might incur. Um, the, the main um, uh, things that we look at are when we're doing our identification of significant risks during uh, the audit planning and, and the performance of the audit. Um, in this case, we didn't find any significant risk. We didn't identify anything that hasn't already been addressed by your internal controls and, uh, and our audit testing. Sig significant matters that arise during the audit. Uh, we didn't make any changes to our audit plan um, as we previously presented uh, earlier on before we started the audit. We provide an audit planning letter that says the types of things that we're going to do, what our materiality level is that we're going to set for the audit, and we didn't make any changes to that plan. Uh, we also have not identified any other significant matters that we wish to bring to your attention at this time. We did not incur any significant difficulties during our audit. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to do the audit. Uh, uh, you know, we're still following some COVID protocols, so we don't come into your premises to uh, do the audit. And uh, Terry is very very prompt and, and, and excellent in providing us with all the materials and all the uh, support and documentation that we need uh, as we requested from him. So uh, uh, he needs to be commended for that once again. Very cooperative. Um, the uh, comments on the accounting practices uh, for your accounting policies, there were no significant changes during the year to any of your accounting policies. We didn't identify any alternative accounting policies that would be more appropriate, and we did not identify any significant accounting policies in controversial or emerging areas. Um, accounting estimates, as Terry mentioned, um, in the audited uh, financial statements, there um, are estimates that uh, need to be done or judgments need to be done in preparing a, a set of financial statements such as these in the type of uh, area that um, you operate in as a municipal government for the town of Swan River. So following significant estimates and judgments are in these financial statements, including your allowance for doubtful accounts, the value of your inventory, accrued liabilities, deferred revenue, the book value of capital assets, and the landfill closure liability. So these are all things that Terry mentioned in his presentation of the uh, financial statements and based on the audit work that we perform we're satisfied with the estimates that have been made by management we did not identify any financial statement disclosures that are particularly significant um, 
sensitive or that require significant judgments that we believe should be specifically drawn to your attention other than the deferred government transfers that are described in note 13. And as Terry had indicated, they um, are almost all completely um, uh, been transferred and, and reported into revenue now. There's just the, uh, the one smaller amount that will be um, uh, not forgivable until, did you say, I think Terry, it was like another 10 years? I believe it was. Anyways, there's only a small amount left of the original amount. Uh, uncorrected misstatements. We accumulate any uncorrected misstatements that we identify during the audit and communicate them to the management, but we didn't identify any. No misstatements during our audit and uh, nothing that required management to correct any misstatements. We did not find any or identify any control deficiencies and in our judgment would be considered to be significant deficiencies. We got separate uh, communications um, that we have requested on a number of written representations from management in respect to their responsibility for the preparation of the consolidated financial statements in accordance with Canadian public sector counting standards for government organizations. And we did not identify any other matters to bring to your attention at this time. So we would like to uh, greatly thank management and staff for the assistance that they provide us during the audit. Uh, Terry does an exemplary job. Thank you very much, Terry. And um, that uh, covers off my presentation. That's the audit findings letter and uh, the audit report. Do okay. so you have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Hardy, and, and uh, I would say uh, thank you to your firm and, and also for your kind words towards our CFO. And we do uh, uh, know that we have a very valuable person there, and, and we appreciate that. Yes. And, and uh, CFO Godina, on behalf of Council, we do thank you for your, your work and, and how you work with uh, this firm as well. Any comments or questions from Council? Doesn't appear to be, so thank you very much, gentlemen. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. All right, so then moving on to 6, 6.1, resulted the letter from the Minister of Municipal Relations dated September the 29th, 2022, regarding the 2022-23 municipal operating grant be received. Moved by... Councillor Balbeck, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? 6.2. Resolved that the letter from the Minister of Municipal Relations dated September the 29th, 2022, regarding the Mobility Disadvantaged Transportation Program be received. Moved by Councillor Bob, or, sorry, Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.3 resulted the building permits 5122 through 5322 with a total estimated value of $23,000 be received. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Seven, 7.1. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor uh, Delorier and then Councillor White. Um, it's not in your report, but where are we at with the backup generator uh, project? For the uh, water treatment plant? Yeah. Uh, that one's been ordered, uh, but it was like a 54 week lead time, so it'll be next September, next summer when it's installed. Okay. 
Councilor White? I believe the MF-1000 is that uh, device that's on the lagoons to perhaps reduce beads and bouquet. Uh, any, anything that you can report on that at the moment? Uh, so we've been taking our water samples for that. First, waiting to get the results back, and uh, so the guys are doing some sludge testing. So that's our baseline for the sludge. And then we'll continue to test it and uh, see if we get some changes in that. Uh, hopefully, reducing it. And uh, when I was out there, the primary cell, the EMF, was just put in that one. So there was still a bit of a smell, it was maybe a little bit less than uh, it was before, mm -hmm. but the real uh, test will be in the spring, because that's always when it's uh, yeah, for sure. the strongest kind of thing. So if we get that in as soon as the ice melts, and then uh, hopefully, you know, it'll clear up that smell rather quickly, as opposed to over, you know, for usually for the first three weeks, it's the worst kind of thing. Do you take them out now for the winter or soon? Uh, we're going to take them over monitoring. Uh, we're planning around October 31st, but we'll just kind of keep an eye on frost because uh, they float in the water, they're anchored, and uh, they have a solar panel. So if there's snow covering the solar panel, then they won't be working, or, and we have to get them out before the frost comes. So that's what we're monitoring. And you, you communicate that with the EMF people and say what's happening, or you share that stuff with them? Yeah, yeah, I've been in touch with them several times. At the startup, we had a meeting with uh, the Manitoba government because uh, I believe I was out with Derek uh, to talk to our environmental approvals branch. So I kind of got the ball rolling on a meeting with them, and they were excited to see the results of it. And uh, putting it in doesn't change any of our um, release requirements. So that's why. I, they were fine with putting it in because we're not asking to, you know, be able to discharge with higher limits than we currently have. So they're fine with them putting it in. And then uh, I've been following up with uh, Saw is the guy from EMF. So when we're installing them, so we get an activation code because they're geo referenced. So once you turn them on, you can't move them more than I think you said 50 meters. Uh, that's just a yeah, it locks it out so that they can't be stolen kind of thing. So I touched base with him on that and then when we're doing the sludge sampling because it was uh, the first time I was involved with that. Uh, so just reviewing the procedure for that and we had a couple of our guys out there looking on the boat and they did a good job helping out. So went pretty smoothly. If, if it gets rid of the bouquet out there, I'll be happy with it regardless. Following up with that area, and I, I believe CFO, uh, CEO Poole is looking into it already. Now, a little bit, I think, I understand of a waterfall. I realize we want to keep the bangers away, to keep them away from the lagoon, to keep them away from the airplanes for public safety. Now, one thing, I'm not sure that they work. Two, I personally don't believe that they are needed in the night. And a little bit, I think, of a waterfall, they're sitting down. So if they're going all night, I would like to know the science behind that and why. Uh, so we did look into moving the southern one um, so that it's no longer there. So we still have the northern one to hopefully uh, make it so that it's not quite as loud uh, for the people. As far as turning them off at night, uh, we would want them to be there at least until dusk because there's still oh, for sure. activity. Mm -hmm. But if we wanted to turn them off for the night, then we'd have to send someone out. Because essentially, like you just turn on the propane, and then it builds up, builds up, discharges, builds up, builds up, discharges. Uh, so I guess that would be up to council if we wanted to have uh, overtime every night. I night can't believe. Month. Unless you tell me differently, I know in the past with bangers on fields, barley fields to keep the birds away, they quickly realized there were bangers and they weren't afraid of them. But the more important, I think this nighttime thing is. I have, I have no evidence, I'm not saying it's wrong, but I, I think I, to be proven wrong, that they work at night when the birds are down. Yeah, and that's where it would be, like, if we wanted to turn them off, we'd have to be sending someone out there, and so we'd be incurring overtime for that every day. And that would cost? Uh, it would be two hours of overtime, 
every day, and then on the weekends. Twice every day, because we have to send them out before they start. Well, I, I guess the community will have to nudge us more aggressively than if, if they're. Yeah, some and, will and we have, we did turn off the southern one, mm -hmm. so that should help. That was done this Monday. The, the big point is, is the safety with Transport Canada and, and, and uh, flights coming in and out of the uh, run, runway. Uh, I think Councillor Morial has been waiting, so I'll let him go and then Councillor Delorier. Um. Mr. Harvey, on your miscellaneous section, you got a comment submitting grant application for public reserve. Uh, what is that about, or refresh my memory? Uh, so that was something that uh, Councillor Bobbitt brought forward with um, the watershed district. That's for that public reserve by um, the public works yard. And so it would be doing some drainage and planting some trees. I did put in the grant application that the money on our side is unsecured and depends on approval by uh, the budget. So it's in the budget, but if council doesn't think that's a good way to spend money, that's already noted in the grant application. It was just sort of coming up to the deadline. Hey, thank you. Yeah, I remember it now. Hey, Councillor DeLaurier. Um, just go through a few of the other capital projects, seeing as it's getting close to the end of the year. The emergency generator for this building, where's that project at? Is that on, on the capital budget? Mm -hmm. We budgeted 35 grand for it. And then... Uh, the plant PLC upgrade, that, one, that one's all done? Uh, we're just finishing up the last little bit with alarms. Okay. And then uh, there was a change order because uh, some of our analyzers weren't working and there was money within the budget uh, that they could replace those analyzers. So that'll be happening in probably November. And then the environmental assessment, I know they started on that, but when when will we receive like the report on that? That one is going to be stretched out a little bit just because uh, the findings indicated that the path we're going down might not be the best path. So with regards to renovating our existing lagoon, so that one may be a bit delayed before you get a report on that. So is the path that it is being indicated a mechanical system it's uh, too early to say without the report it's a little early to say but yeah either a mechanical or a new lagoon oh wow yeah that's unreal okay so I, do we do we have an estimated time for when that report will be uh not currently not but currently. I'll more okay The generator, uh, had, that project has not started. So that likely won't happen this year then? No, the, la the last time we tried it was ready within six weeks, so we could we could get it done. I'm just thinking it's even getting late to pour concrete yeah. though. Um, I, I guess the only reason I ask is because that was borne by general the general fund, so that 35 grand how do we account for that? Like if it shows up next year and it's borne by the general fund again, we're either gonna, unless we set this money aside, it's either gonna get spent on something else and- Miss it. Yeah, and you, yeah. you end up taxing for it twice. And you, you don't really, because you bought something else that was obviously a value to the town, but or but this happens, it's happened a few times where, and it's caused confusion. I know with Councilor Morio brought it up the other week, you know, things that get, put in multiple budgets, it causes yeah. us confusion. So I guess just things that, especially that are born by, if they're born by reserves, it's pretty easy. It just doesn't get pulled out of reserves. Yeah. But if it's born by the general fund, it uh, it can cause confusion in future years as, you know, all of a sudden it might appear that you're being taxed twice for it. This one would, would be born out of the surplus. Right, but the surplus went into the yeah. general fund and next year, if it doesn't get spent this year, next year, and it shows up on the capital budget again, 
and there is no surplus, it's going to get borne by taxes. I guess that's my, where my concern comes from. No, and we can, like, we'll get on that right away, to be honest. It, uh, yeah, it cut on the corner of the desk, and that's where it's stayed. Okay. You know, I, I guess I won't be here towards the end of the year, but if this project doesn't happen, is, it, is there a possibility that council can transfer that 35 grand into uh, a reserve so that, you know, it doesn't happen that next year gets taxed again? And I, and I know we like to say that we get taxed twice for, and I understand that we're not, but it just, it makes it a lot harder to, to, def to defend and, and say that we haven't. CFO Gnita, do you have any comments on that? Yeah, as CAO Pool said, we had it coming from surplus, but uh, there's no surplus column on the financial plan that goes to the province, so it you know, seemed that one by right general column that it was to come from surplus. Mm -hmm. And it shows up as the surplus on the income side of it, the surplus uh, went into the general income side of it, you know, this will show up as, a, as an expense. Um, so does that mean that it, we wouldn't transfer that $35,000 out of, out of, uh, into the, onto the income side? Is that what I'm hearing you say? Correct. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, Councillor Bob, because I'm on the same tune. I don't know if Councillor Morio is on the same tune as Councillor Deloria or not, but you were next. I just wanted to speak a little bit. I see obtaining a quote for a stump grinder. Is that like a walk behind thing or is that an attachment for tobacco? Uh, we're looking at an attachment for the skid steer okay. so that we can go along. We have, we're starting to get uh, a list of stumps that uh, we can cut and uh, it'd be nice to get on top of those. So I'm, not dealing with the sheets that are so is this up. something that uh, is there another is there any contractors in town that have these machines already uh there is one contractor that has a walk behind one okay would this machine be something we can do the willows and the ditches with uh if the banks aren't too steep yes if they're too steep then no Council Morio. Uh, yeah, my thought was uh, along Council Gloria's uh, line with that uh, backup generator in town office. I wouldn't be opposed to, to safeguard that money by uh, proposing that we create a reserve for it to transfer those funds there and then it's securely put in place and earmarked for that so that uh, it doesn't get lost or in confusion uh, going forward, especially with. Uh, new council members coming on in the next couple weeks. Okay. I think that we probably can do that. <coughs> well, we're going to try and yeah. get some... Yeah. We'll maybe have that in a resolution perhaps at our next meeting. Uh, well, yeah, give us a couple weeks to see what we can do. Okay. Council Bill Ray. Well, I was just going to say, um, <clears throat> you know, Mr. Poole seems to indicate that we might be able to complete that project yet this year, so I think that should be the yeah, first. The, the first thing, but if we can't, then... Okay, perfect. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried. All right, other reports. Uh, start with uh, Council and Councilor Morio. Hey, um... Not a whole lot. I uh, had the committee of the whole meeting last Tuesday um, where we discussed uh, a few items. Uh, in particular, we went over um, the animal control bylaw, which you'll see uh, second reading later on this evening. Um, also, um, for the rest of council and public, uh, our neighbors, uh, Swan Valley West, uh, their new fire department, Thunder West Fire Department, became operational last. Friday at noon. Um, so we still have some unanswered questions in regarding um, that department as how it relates with ours with running orders and responses and so forth. Um, An administration and fire chief uh, Fedorchuk is uh, endeavoring to uh, 
move forward and solve some of those uh, concerns that we still have. Um, I also, as part of um, my role with um, PMH and uh, the <coughs> keeping those tabs and getting um, reports as often as I can regarding the uh, CT scanner project, which has uh, been approved for the facility here as one ever, so keeping tabs on that and uh, I'll advise council as soon as there's, I hear any major milestones on that. And uh, besides just the uh, airport banger concerns that uh, we already discussed. Um, I haven't had anything else for you guys. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Bobbick. Thank you, Your Worship. I uh, have just uh, probably more questions and comments, I guess. Uh, when we're speaking about Willows, we talked about the Willows on the way out to the golf course. I don't know what the road is. Has that been anything put forward to clean those off? If I see somebody cut a few of them down, but I mean, it's still pretty bad there. Yeah, we just did that temporarily okay. while we're waiting for a contractor, okay. um, just to try and increase visibility. But uh, we do have a contractor it's slated to that uh, is slated to do some work there. Perfect. Uh, I'd just like to speak a little bit on that landfill. I talked a bit about having a meeting in the near future here. We'll wait and see what happens with the elections with our neighbors here. We may involve them and the contractors, but I'll be getting a hold of. Uh, Superintendent of Works and uh, CAO to set something up after the fact and we'll see where we go with. On that line of there, uh, it's been noted that uh, you can now remove stuff from the landfill with permission from the scale or one of the workforce out there if it was all right to remove. One of the thoughts that would be is the nutrition that all this is, there's lots of useful stuff out there. Some landfills have an area where they put useful stuff and people take it when they get it, instead of throwing it in the pile, the people have to uh, dig it out. So thoughts the council could think council could think of is something in the near future where we can do this. That may come at a price, because I'm sure the contractors are going to need to look after there'll be something some people think that are worth something and they might not be and he's going to have to move it. With that being said, if there is a price, I would like to see it, and this is my personal opinion, if you're able to take something out of the landfill, then I will use Animal Protection League, get a donation, and use seven dollars to come in, use seven dollars to go out, go towards the Animal Protection League. So these are just thoughts that I'd like to maybe have something nutrition by spring, or maybe my idea isn't worth the grain of salt, but I mean, something that come. And there seems to be lots of useful items out there that can be reused and help not go into the landfill. Uh, speaking of that, I spoke with uh, Watershed today. You've got where you put all the contaminated soil out there where the people will hold it, but I guess you didn't put it. Uh, we talked of, uh, has there been any thought of seeding that area? Uh, in the future, we'll probably seed it just uh, to prevent wind erosion. We still have two uh, provincial contaminated soil sites within no. So we want those. So would that be the same material, or would that go to the like the petroleum <coughs> department? The petroleum department. Yeah. So this I'm talking about the other stuff up on top there. Oh, oh so, sorry. You mean like the yeah? Plant? So if you want to get a hold, of, there is a, a mixture that is used by watershed. We call it ditch mixture. It's a low growing, really dense, stops erosion and stuff. Then the co-op angle can mix that up. With that, also watershed could seed it for you uh, at a cost, of course. So, um, that's something if you could. I think personally, I would think winter seeding would probably be the best just before the snow throws the ground and you have growth there. Has there been any thought of, and I get you have talked to the people at CAMSAC about their arena and what they're doing there and how it's going? Uh, I don't know if Grant Fedorchuk can pipe in, but uh, just in discussions with their CAO, they had they had unexpected issues with their roof. That was really the, the I guess if you want to say the negative part of their project. Other than that, everything went went well. they I think they were putting in their concrete as we speak. So I'm just wondering, like I'm thinking of the soil conditions and like what they 
arrived at and what they did for densities to come up to the cement level. Yeah, we were lucky. We got to tour right when they were doing their, their base and they exposed their, their cross members. Okay. So their tests came back really well. They, had, they didn't have to excavate what they initially thought, so there was a pretty big savings there. And they also chose not to encase their cross members uh, in concrete, so they left them. There was minimal uh, rusting or any like any metal erosion at all. So uh, it was recommended by the engineer that they encase those in concrete, but they they chose not to do that due to the condition of them that was already 50 years old, 60 okay. years old. But no, I just long as been a conversation. We, we have been a conversation. On, just a, the excavation. If they can get away with two feet, how they did it instead of us doing eight feet, yeah, that would be a lot of expense. Uh, a sidewalk from uh, 10th Avenue on 1st Street North going east. They call it Broda's Apartments. It used to be a new name now. It is really bad. So yeah, that it was on the list for this year with all the water breaks that we had. I'm not sure we're going to get to it this year. Oh, yeah, I can't see it happening this year, but yeah. it, I just speaking with some of the residents there that were just wondering about. Yeah, that one we we're hoping to get this year because it is bad. It's totally small. Okay, so uh, user, user aware. Oh yeah, right. yeah. That's the the next in line for the replacement. Yeah. And so and speaking of that public reserve, gee, that was we called that a rain garden through watershed, which you applied for the grants directly. Yeah, yeah. Municipalities, uh, we were able to apply for eighty percent grants, same as uh, watershed. So I just did it under the town. Uh, I've been in touch with uh, Superintendent Works Harvey here over the asphalt over by the post office and uh, also I bumped into Jordan in my travels and he brought up the fact that he knew about Ace Hardware has the same thing. So I, I guess if I can explain we're on the same page that right now it's a little late to do anything other than cold mix to put in there and stomp it in as best we can for now and that maybe could be look, looked at next year to repair the, like we talked about, a strip, uh, the width of a car on that street or have a look at that street a little bit closer so that when people get out to get the mail stuff, there's no uh, trip hazards there. But there's also, which Jordan picked up on Ace Hardware there too. So I mean, that's, they're looking. So just to let everybody know that's not, and hopefully that'll be done in the near future. Uh, I do believe that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Council White. Uh, continue on reports. Uh, 21st of September, I, I had the opportunity to help with Swan Valley uh, Snowmobile Club, and, and the guys are in need. They, they had a lot of trails that need to be replaced, and I so appreciate the work they do for the valley as a whole and the monies they bring into our community. So I said, why don't you just get a, a group together, come and approach council, tell us the things you do and what your needs are, and we'll talk about it. So. I'd ask you to consider uh, helping those guys and girls because they're a pretty positive group. On the 21st, I attended the Swan Valley Business Consortium meeting, and the thing that, w that permeated the whole discussion was better communications and how to communicate. Uh, and it appears, regardless how efficient as the newspaper is, Facebook is, there are people that don't get the newspaper, don't look at Facebook, don't have TV, don't have a radio. They're a minority, but uh, somehow we have to do a better way at. Uh, communicating with those people, and I'm not sure what that way is. On the 22nd, I had the pleasure of going with uh, Council Morio, myself, the Mayor, and uh, Zio Pool to South West for the opening of the new governance uh, building. It's a beautiful building, uh, a lot of pretty industrious, hardworking people in there, and lots of community support. Then on the 23rd, uh, I went to West Pacific for the opening of their uh, new school, which is a beautiful facility, spotless, everybody's in there with socks on, and I need to see how they respected the building. And then after that, we went to the George Principal building, and one of those rooms, one of the big rooms, is sort of like a small gym, was named after Buddy Brass, a man that's so revered in our community, uh, a visionary, a positive guy. So I brought greetings from behalf of council and uh, the mayor and our community. And it was a pleasure to do that. And uh, on the 26th, we had the cow, which we talked about briefly, and we talked a lot about rink options and still a work in progress. On the 29th, I had a Zoom interview with Charlene Gulak. She's a new rural Manitoba Economic Development Officer and looking at ways for economic development in our community. And it was a 
generally believe we would wait till post-election and to see what uh, what process, what way we could do. But she said she would come up here and meet with our council, any any council, to look at, look at ways that we can do a better job through economic development, which we have to do. And the 30th, uh, I went to the Truth and Reconciliation Walk. Uh, again, I brought greetings on behalf of town, uh, council, the mayor, and, and the community. Like three, four times more people than the one two years ago. It was uh, pretty moving. Uh, a couple of elders spoke and uh, uh, quite a positive thing is how we can work together and get things. Uh, can't forget, gotta forgive, gotta move on. So uh, I was pleased to be part of that. Somewhere in my fu in the future, I would like a report from uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni on what's happening with COPP. Are they happy? Are they unhappy? How many people? Where's it going? What are they doing? Because uh, I'm not privy to what they're all about. With that. Uh, from how I think uh, we do. I know the mayor's got that on his list too. I want to thank uh, Councilor Moyer's comments uh, we talked a bit the other day and uh, moving forward with that, that uh, CT scan, we can't sit on it, he's at a perfect spot to nudge uh, the CEO, uh, Mr. Schoenberg, who may or may not be in a spot to make it happen, but uh, there's a lot of people pushing for it and uh, your worship, I'm hoping your letter has gone to the uh, minister and the premier, hey, you can't promise these things are not produced, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. Somebody cutting a ribbon over the one this day soon. So thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. <clears throat> Councillor Delorier. Ah, uh, I have nothing <clears throat> to report. Nothing to report. Nothing to report, okay. That's fair. Okay, uh, myself, uh, other than the stuff that was uh, already said, but I, I do want to say that uh, going to uh, Sapatoya Cree Nation and being invited to uh, to speak and, and to witness their opening of their governance building uh, was uh, was great to be invited and, and I really enjoyed the, the time there and 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 the people and, and the friend the friendships that we have grown I think that's one of the biggest things and and they recognize the partnerships uh, the chief had mentioned and some of the counselors and, and citizens that they recognize the, the partnerships and, and the growth that we have between Sapatoya Cree Nation and, and the town of Swan River and our commitment uh, to continue the growth with that and with also with, uh, with uh, Wisquisipic and, and Métis government. So we're continuing on and, uh, and we'll do the best we, we possibly can. So, And then other than that, I've been uh, working with CO Pool on uh, the new inaugural meeting with our new council coming up here on the 27th of October and uh, that's looking, uh, it's looking good. We got a good presentation put together and uh, I've also had a chance to meet up with uh, the members of council that have been, I, I guess you can say they've been elected uh, and uh, I will be meeting with everyone prior to the election or I mean the inaugural meeting uh, to discuss, you know, uh, appointments and committees and so on. So that's ongoing. Other than that, uh, that's it for me. So I'll turn over to CEO Poole if he has uh, anything to add. Uh, yeah, thanks, Your Worship. I attended the MMA district meeting uh, <clears throat> uh, in Brandon. Um, basically, it was around orientations, the election, asset management plans, and strategic plans. But uh, this, you know, really good informative meeting of the, the CAOs in our district. Uh, attended a, web a webinar on uh, with Canada Infrastructure, so that was pretty interesting. They're they're looking for feedback on on how to roll out their, their programs in the future. Uh, as his worship mentioned, drafting orientation for new council, uh, the service review uh, to follow, and the resource management plan and strategic planning updates, uh, all those workshops are being uh, drafted. Uh, and dealing with the, the details with the starting up of Thunder West Fire Department, so we've been, I've been working with the Chief on, on just trying to secure those details and how everything's going to work. Uh, we did receive our CBA from our lawyer, so hopefully we can be passing that and finalizing that document uh, as soon as possible. And again, had the privilege to attend the Sapatoyak uh, New Band Office opening uh, with the mayor. That's it. Okay, perfect. 
All right, so we'll move on. Uh, new business and 8.1. Resolve the proposed subdivision of parcel at northeast one quarter section 22-36-27 west and numbered by Manitoba Municipal Government Community and Regional Planning Branches file number 4193-22-7709 be hereby approved. Moved by Councilor Delorier, seconded by Councilor Bobic. Discussion, Councilor Delorier. So, I, on parcel A, what? Oh, oh, they'll be able to access the road to the to the north. Never mind. I was going to say they're going to be landlocked if they do that, but they'll. I assume they'll have to access their uh, their property only from the north now. Okay. Um, second question is kind of not relevant, but I see the town has a caveat registered against the title, but it, do we, would we know what that is for? Is that for, it's from 1976? I, I'd have to check what that is. Okay, so like how, how like this is that would have been tight, pulled from land titles and it says no description, no, uh, you know, no notes. So would we keep separate notes on what that caveat might be? We, you know, we would have to look that up and pull it up, yeah. yeah. From land titles? Yeah. So wouldn't this have been pulled from land titles? Like, in, it says no note, no description? Or would it have the actual caveat document? That's yeah. correct. Oh, okay. Yeah. If, if I had to guess, and I, it's a guess, is we do have uh, a design from the 70s of a storm sewer going from uh, Evergreen area to the river directly north. Oh yeah. If I were to guess, that's it's a public reserve. Okay. When they subdivide, then it would be there, but that's the closest I can get. So, so parcel B will be solely in the town now, and they're saying that they still want it, it, the ability to, uh, oh, what, what, how would they call it? Use it for forest products, which is an acceptable use on, as as an agricultural urban reserve. Okay. That's it for me. Okay. Further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? It's carried. Nine, nine point one, unfinished business. Result of the town of Swan River approved to the Swan River Community Center a grant equivalent to the amount of property taxes in the 2023 year. Moved by Council White, seconded by Council Delorier. So there's information there from the CFO uh, and other uh, attachments that you had a chance to browse. Discussion? Councilor Bobbitt. So is this a one time thing or is this going to be a taxation? I'm, I'm sure they would expect it. Annually, they would have to request it annually. We we did not include twenty two because we are budgeting for that revenue. Mr. Harvey. Yeah, and, and we could clarify with them. It sounded like they were requesting it as a one time due to COVID and that. That's not to say they won't come next year and ask for it, but uh, when they presented, it was in relation to trying to deal with COVID and. Uh, loss of revenue in that. Councillor Baldwin? Yeah. So has there been any other non-profit organization that have received this similar to this? We have a number of uh, non-profit organizations that pay taxes, yes. Multiple. Councillor uh, Morio. Um, now, on the face, it, it looks um, challenging for me to accept, but uh, knowing the history and following the presentation that they gave and the financials that they provided, um, the forgiveness or the granting of next year's 2023's um, grant um, I, probably is the lesser of the two evils. Um, where they uh, 
we, we, we grant them these funds or we may inherit that uh, entire facility with a lot more costs down the road, which we can't uh, assume. So one thing to be cognizant when uh, okay. we can vote. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Deloria. I guess just a comment to those councillors who who may may be finding issue with approving this. I think it's important to keep in mind that you know in the in the upcoming months and in the past couple of months, but in the upcoming months, we're going to be talking about subsidizing a certain segment of the population's recreation choices to the tune of millions of dollars, and and we subsidize them to their their operating costs for their recreation to choice to you know the tune of quarter million dollars in operating every single year. Yes, we own the building, but I mean, that's what we're doing. We're su subsidizing somebody's recreation choices. And here we have a, a, a group who has stood on their own two feet for a, for a long time and the town has not had to, to, to give them very much. And they finally came at, come asking for a little bit of help. So I, I think it, we need to keep some perspective on, on the fact that uh, Yes, arenas are, are the heart of the community. Whether you're in hockey or not, that you know they, they're a, they're a gathering place. They're a, a place where, where you know, they make communities vibrant. But I think curling rinks have that that just as much. Um, and you know what? They appeal to a uh, a broader age spectrum than than arenas do. As far as once you age out of playing hockey, you can always pick up a curling room almost until you're ready to go to the home. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I, I think it's important to keep in mind, and you know what, I don't do either two, two sports, but I think, I think it's important to keep in mind that we almost take for granted that, yeah, we're going to dole out money for, for, for hockey, and here we have an opportunity to, uh, you know, maybe, maybe make sure we can strengthen a group that, that owns their own building, operates their own building, and hopefully this is a one-time thing. So I, I think it's just important for councillors to keep in mind that, that when they're making this decision. Councillor Bobby. I guess that's why I asked a question if there's any other. I just, uh, I did the short version and you did the long version. So both on the same page. Uh, Mr. Poole? If I may, and I may be out of line, but if, if we're going to do that, can we reduce the rink subsidy to the amount that we're getting? <laughs> <laughs> On that, for the, <laughs> for the discussion, go ahead. Should we clarify in the resolution that this is a one-time grant? You know, and if I guess in, if in a subsequent year they they think they need another grant, they'll have to. Well, it's stated it's for two thousand and twenty. Well, no, it's stated that it's equivalent to the amount of property taxes from the twenty twenty-three year. It doesn't say when we're going to pay it. it doesn't say we anything. It, it kind of leaves a little bit open. Can, can, council can make an adjustment if, if the mover and the seconder agree to it. I who's the seconder? Me. I yeah, I, I agree to it. Okay, so how do you want to change it? Um, I can add for the year twenty three at the end. Equivalent to the amount of property taxes in in, in the twenty twenty three year for the twenty twenty three financial year. Yeah. Or approve a one time grant equivalent to the amount of property taxes in the twenty twenty three. What is that total? It would be like eight thousand dollars roughly. Well, I guess we don't know because it depends what you guys are going to do to the taxes in 2023. We got the last tax. Yeah, re refresh. Right. Do you have the amount for the last tax that they paid? Uh, it's in here. It's in here. It's right here. <clears throat> That's where to grab the full amount. No, eight eight thousand sixty six for twenty twenty two. All right. So uh, we have amended the uh, um, resolution, resolved the town of Swan River approve a one time grant to the Swan River Community Center equivalent to the amount of property taxes in the two thousand twenty three year. It was moved by Councillor White and it was seconded by Councillor Delorier. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried.
10 point, uh, accounts 10.1, resolve that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 29437 to number 29471, totaling $418,585.83 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5176 to number 5183, totaling 92000 Four hundred and forty-nine and forty-nine cents, as listed on Schedule B. Payroll accounts checks number five one eight four to number five one nine two, totaling one hundred and three dollars, one hundred and three thousand five hundred and sixty-two and ninety-five cents, as listed on Schedule C. Direct deposits totaling one thousand nine hundred and sixty-four dollars and seventy-two cents, as listed on Schedule D, and direct deposits totaling eight hundred and ninety-five dollars as listed on Schedule E. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Morial. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick. Uh, not so much on the check, but I just see that uh, <laughs> landfill demolition of chipping and road building has been paid for, which is great. Uh, the measurement was done by you, I take it. Uh, was there is a GPS you use on that? Yeah. So I just want to speak a bit about that. Uh, I'm not saying that we're out. <laughs> I would imagine we're very close to the measurements. There's a company in town that does measurements all the time, uh, which is within 2% plus or minus. At the same time, this company, when they do it, they usually do a whole quarter section, would be able to measure that plus be able to measure your cells and would you for if you did it from year to year you would have the capability of knowing how much your cells are filling in per year and would be giving you the benefit of knowing how many more years your cells would last so it's something to look at if you're kind of getting bang for your buck you're out there measuring anyway uh, the company's name is green arrow uh had to work for doing stockpile measurements uh, they're really close. So just to, that's something that warrants your time to be somewhere else. That's, and, and again, goes back to cost, but at the same time, I, not so much measuring that, as this, this has brought it to my attention, that you would know what your, how long your cell is gonna last by that measurement every year, if you did it on the exact dates or whatever you would <coughs> how long your cells would last, so just a suggestion. Uh, just now that I see a uh, water bill for hauling water out there, there was talk of putting a tank out at the landfill with a pump for the summer months and draining it in the winter, which I think would be a great idea if small fires turn into big fires. Uh, if you can do it, uh, something to look at. Yeah, we were going to look at one tank that we have in the yard. Okay. Uh, I'll follow up with Jordan, though, on what you got. If that's yeah. Okay, great. Sure. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.2. Result of the Town of Swan River's draft consolidated financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2021 be approved and the independent auditor's report thereon be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? carried. 10.3, whereas the capital budget for the year 2022 included 70000 for 2nd Street South Base Repair and Asphalt and 130000 for the 800, and 9, 800 to 900 block 2nd Street North Mill and Fill totaling $200,000 being borne by Federal Tax Reserve. And whereas the 2nd Street South Base Repair and Asphalt 800 to 900 block uh, 2nd Street North Mill and Fill and Rose Avenue Excavate and Fill projects have been completed at a total cost of $195,910. Therefore, be it received, resolved that $195,910 be transferred from the Federal Gas Tax Reserve Fund to the General Operating Fund. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Morial. 
Discussion? All in favor? Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, Councilor Morio. Your hand uh, on the screen kind of blends in with your backdrop there, so I, I missed it, but I, my apologies. I, so I take that back and, and go ahead. Yeah, no problem. Just a, a general question here for uh, Mr. Harvey. Um, the extra funds that we got from the provincial government this year, 30 some thousand or whatever, um, for road repair due to um, flood or whatever it was all the reason for it. Where's that money being expended? Is that going into the road repair fund since it's not being expended or? Uh, no, it was used uh, to cover some of the patching. So we did some additional patching work around town, er areas where there was uh, gator cracking and potholes like First Street North and out by the highway. And uh, so that the money that we spent there will be charged against that. Uh, okay, uh, perfect. Uh, yeah, I follow you there. Perfect. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11, 11.1. Resolved the bylaw 21 2022 being a bylaw to consolidate and amend our animal control bylaws be read a second time. Did we miss 10.4? Well, I did too. Uh, sorry, let's go back to 10.4. Whereas the capital budget for the year 2022 included $45,000 for landfill shredding and road building, of which $10,000 for road building was done was to be borne by federal gas tax reserve and whereas uh, said road has been built at a cost of $9,360 therefore be it resolved that $9,360 be transferred from the federal gas tax reserve fund to the general operating fund. Moved by Councillor Bobick, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, let's try this again. 11, 11.1. Resolve the bylaw 21, 2022, being a bylaw to consolidate and amend our animal control bylaws, be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Bobic and then Councillor Morio. So what are the changes that stand out? So we went, we were directed to go back after first reading that 13.1 on page 23 was a, a little too strict because there could be casual people riding horses. Uh, so we did add a section D to 13.1 that, that basically stated uh, people must uh, follow the Highway Traffic Act. They're allowed on road allowances, but not on sidewalks, pathways. Uh, there should be not parks in there, but etc. Uh, I know etc. is a bad thing to have in a bylaw, but uh, the part, the, the the deal of it is, if someone wants to casually ride their horse down the road, they have to follow the traffic rules, and they can. Uh, and then the other one was to allow three cats and dogs uh, per property, as opposed to two. Did you catch that, Councillor Bobber? Yeah, I'm just uh, so, and then at the same time, so you can have three dogs, but you can also have a visitor for 180 days. Is that the way I read it? Uh, yeah, if you had one visitor. Two visitors. What's the number on your DC? I, I'm still looking for it. Uh, it's 5 9. Thanks. Right, so. 140, pardon me. Yeah, somebody's dog sitting, you know. Yeah, and and they've got four. Like, you know, I guess 100, that's a, that's a pretty long time. I guess, I guess it's, so it's one extra, not 10 extra. That's, that's correct. Okay, perfect, thank you. 
Okay, uh, Councillor Morio. <clears throat> Mr. Poole or Mr. Fedorchuk, I know we had talked about uh, in our deliberations last week with the cow uh, regarding uh, animals that are not for breeding purposes um, to be spayed or neutered, the requirement to be that. Um, was that put in there or talked about? And <coughs> uh, I know that went in my notes, but I, I don't think that made this draft. Uh, we were going to I, I put it. it. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, we were going to put it right in the beginning. Okay. Uh, I will make that note again. Okay, and then the second one that I I know we talked about, but I don't see it either, is for cats to have a, a not a, a like an ID tag. It doesn't need a, like a license, but just a, a owner contact number. ID take no license. Okay, that that is the exact reason why we only put second reason, uh, reading in. We didn't want third, but uh, we will make sure. Uh, so in, in general, just I guess uh, like regarding the speed or neutered, are we requiring this or are we just kind of? You know, hey, it should be spayed or neutered. Like, do do you want this as a, if you're if it's not spayed or neutered, is there a penalty? Like, we're it's going to be tough to enforce that. Like, we're not going to be able to enforce that very well. So I, I guess it can be a, a whereas statement where the town is of the opinion that animals should be spayed and neutered. Uh, Councilor Moore, you're, you're kind of still on, so I'll let you keep on going. And then Councilor Delory, and then uh, Mr. Harvey can go after. Okay, so, so maybe I would make the suggestion on that. Um, is that any at-large cat that's impounded by the uh, bylaw or impounded, um, and, is, and if the owner is not operating uh, breeding premises, that the animal uh, will be spayed or neutered before returned? So that, like, I understand the difficulty of enforcing all that one, but uh, um, I don't think maybe we should be penalizing or um, trying to overhandedly enforce responsible pet owners for that to keep their pets at home. Uh, but uh, the ones that do let them at large, um, if they're not part of a breeding kennel or for breeding purposes, uh, and if they are found to be intact, that uh, they will be spayed or neutered at the uh, Orders cost before they return. Okay, we won't, we won't be able to know if it's part of a, a breeding services if we if we if it's stray. Uh, I think that that's probably some stuff that we may have to go into uh, uh, in part of the cow meeting maybe to further discuss that instead of trying to sort all that out. We can. Is that all right, Council Morio? Yeah, that definitely needs to be like, walked through and go from there. Fully agree. Okay. Councilor DeMario. I, I guess I'm not, <clears throat> I don't have strong feelings one way or another about including the, the spare neuter language in there, but I guess on the argument on how do we enforce that, we have rabies language in here. I imagine, it, it, and you know what, uh, how are we how are we expecting to enforce that it, to me it would be whatever our mechanism is for enforcing the rabies clause would be very similar to be able to enforce the uh and if we think we can't enforce the rabies clause an argument for not including the spade as neuter yeah. is that we can't enforce it then why do we even have the rabies clause but i think the rabies clause is important so we better figure out a way to enforce it and yeah. whatever way we do figure out that same method could be used to figure out the spare neuter having said all that i really probably don't care if you know, if, if, if they're spayed or neutered and, you know, even if they're not part of a defined breeding program, how do you know I don't get attached to my dog 10 years down the road and he's going to, he's going to die and I want, I want him to have, I want him to have puppy. Like, I don't know, to say that you can't ever breed your dog if you don't make it a specific part of a program. And in the end, what you'll end up having is, oh yeah, these are breeding dogs. People will just say that because there's no... I mean, are, are we going to expect people to actually register with like a breeding organization for for mutts? There's there probably isn't even breeding organizations for mutts. So, to me, it does open up a whole can of worms. 
the enforcement part is probably not necessarily a strong argument against it because we need to figure out a way to enforce it for the rabies aspect. <laughs> Yeah, we, we take advantage that they do go to a veterinary clinic now. If we had a pound, they would not be too easily tested because that's that's how it's done. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Delorier, and I'm sure that we are going to miss you. Uh, Councillor <laughs> Mr. Harvey. Uh, so as far as the enforcement for the spade or neuter, I'm not sure about spade. I don't know the details of that, but uh, for the neuter. <laughs> It could be determined for the ones that are at large. Um, so when they go to the vet, the vet would be able to say this one's intact and it could be a fine based on that. So there's like an at large fine and then an intact. So you could have the fine that way. So then that wouldn't capture the people that have it in their house and don't have to but if it's not at large, it's not as much an issue. And then the other thing, Potentially, and this is just me thinking just in response to your comments, but for the breeding, uh, if breeding is a way of making money, then they should have a business license. So if they don't have a business license, then they're not breeding. Or if they're breeding, then okay, then buy a business license. Or if you're just going to give them away. <laughs> cool. That's up to council. Go ahead, Councilor Delorier. I, and I, I guess I like that having two, a two-tiered fine system because if you're choosing not to, I, I like that a lot more than arbitrarily taking, you know, stray dogs and all of a sudden you're, I think that would open up a whole can of complaints. Oh, you went and neutered my dog without my permission and all this. But if you have a two-tiered system for, for uh, fines, you know, it would cause those who choose not to get their, their, their animal spayed or neutered to really think twice about Wow, it's going to cost me $500 instead of 250 if my dog, you know, decides to wander off. So I think that is a good avenue to, to pursue rather than, you know, yeah, are you part of a breeding program and are you not and all that. I, I like that a lot. Uh, looks like uh, Chief Fedorchuk likes to chime in, so go ahead. Sorry not to extend the discussion, but... Uh our biggest issue is stray cats. Uh, that's where I would put direct my focus to. And uh, we could contact Mountain, and we, they're part of a program that their stray cats are picked up, uh, neutered, and given shots. Uh, and their municipality pays for, I believe, it's half of the system, uh, which could be something we could look at. Any, any impounded stray cat w without an identification tag that is intact could be neutered. Okay, well, we'll have, I think, more discussion about this uh, next Tuesday. So we'll just have to make sure we're more prepared for it and, and be able to close it off. Further discussion, Councilor DeLaurier. Not on the content of the bylaw, but more on procedure. So right now we have second reading here. If it comes to a future meeting, we have third reading, and it won't have the draft language and it won't have the stuff crossed out, I'm assuming, you know, how you change two to three. It, it would have, like, the final document in it. Does that final document, when it gets passed by council, does that go in the minute book as part of the or what? What? Where does the official copy live? Well, we have uh, like our bylaws book, but uh, unless it's unless it's in the resolution as Schedule A, Schedule A goes in the minutes. Okay, but, but the actual bylaws don't become part of the well, minutes. We we update. We have our own system for tracking okay. bylaws, so. We, so we're not, I mean, yeah. we'd be very, very organized if we didn't have. Yeah, I, I, get, I guess not knowing how it works internally in the office, that's just what I'm wondering is how do you keep track of revisioning and, and all that. Okay. separate for bylaws. How far does that go back, like right to 1908? We had an employee go all the way back. As far as we could, it doesn't go that far. We didn't actually huh. keep records. Just scan them in. Wow. Long ways. All right, further discussion? All in favor? Carried. 13. Resolved that pursuant to sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, fire services, uh, rural water agreement, and uh, charging stations. Uh, we can add personnel.
Um, <coughs> moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. Okay, good. So we're uh, out of camera and uh, items arising out of the uh, discussion in camera. Uh, resolution um, to bring forward in regards to the water agreement. I'll, I'll make that motion. Okay, so Mr. Um, we'll Mr. Poole will draft up the, uh, uh, the resolution. <clears throat> So just as he's typing that, a reminder that uh, the personnel committee has a short meeting right after this uh, meeting. Whereas the town of Swan River has drafted a tentative rural water agreement with the rural municipality of Swan Valley West, and whereas the attached non amendable agreement shall be accepted as is. Therefore, be it resolved that the town of Swan River approve the tentative agreement for the submission to the Public Utilities Board. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick. I will be uh, voting against this resolution because I just don't feel comfortable until I see a resolution from Swan Valley West to that effect. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 10.09 p.m. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned.